ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, the praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance and forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds. Whoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead him astray. And whoever Allah leads astray, there is no one that can guide him. I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone. And that he has no partners or associates, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. This evening, bi idhnillahi ta'ala, this is our 18th session, reading from at tawdih al bayan li shajrat al iman, the clarification and elucidation of the tree of faith by Al Imam Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al Sa'adi, rahimahullah. Tonight we will continue yani from this second section of the book which deals with the things through which Iman is derived, strengthened and increased. Uh, and we previously mentioned um, four matters from which Iman is derived including uh, having knowledge of Al-Asma, Asma, Asma Allah Al-Husna, yani the beautiful names of Allah, their meanings and yani using them to worship Allah. We also talked about yani, reflecting, pondering over Tadabbur Al-Quran, and we talked about um, having knowledge of and giving care and concern to the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Last week we talked about knowing the Prophet himself, his character, his manners, and his qualities, all of these being means uh, to achieve Iman, and through which Iman is strengthened or increased. So tonight, we're going to continue with that topic and mention two or three more matters through which Iman may be derived and by which Iman is increased and strengthened. Before we do that, we're going to quickly look over some of the points that we mentioned last week. Uh, the questionnaire study guide for lecture number 17. The first question being, how can knowing the Prophet Wasallam's life, knowing about his life, his lofty character and faultless exemplary qualities. How can this be a source of Iman? How can this be a source of Iman? So the Imam, the author, Rahimahullah, he said that whoever knows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knows him well, knowing his qualities and characteristics, whoever knows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it would not be possible for them to doubt his truthfulness or to doubt the truthfulness of the message that he brought yani in the revelation, yani in the Quran and in the Sunnah and the Deen of Islam. So knowing the Prophet Wasallam is indeed a tremendous means through which a person can achieve Iman or strengthen the Iman. Question number two, discuss the meaning of the ayah in the 23rd Surah 69th ayah Yani the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَمْ لَمْ يَعْرِفُوا رَسُولَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَهُمْ مُنْكِرُونَ yani, Is it or is it that they did not know, that they did not recognize their messenger? They didn't know him well. And therefore, yani, that's the reason why they disbelieved, rejected him. Yani, how does this ayah support the above point that knowing the Prophet wasallam is a means through which a person achieves iman? How, how, what is the and istidlal. How is this? How did the author, Rahimahullah, use this ayah to support the point? Now, uh, because in actuality, it's opposite of knowing the proper way to Islam. So they didn't have the man, they didn't have belief. They just denied his messengership. And they denied him due to ignorance, due to not actually knowing him. So this ayat is saying to us, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, is it that they didn't know their messenger? And that's why they rejected. Had they known him, then they wouldn't have doubted. Yani knowing him would have necessitated that they hasten to believe in him. Yani for those who didn't believe, and it would have been a means of increase of iman for those who already believed. The third question 
Yani summarize the story of Dhimad al-Azdi who offered to perform Ruqya on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is this story? Any summarize, okay? It's a lengthy hadith. What is the summary of this story now? So, uh, he, he was a leader of a, of a certain group of people. Okay, he was a leader of his people. He was known for uh, his, his Ruqya. And he was known for doing Ruqya, yeah, healing people through Ruqya, no. naam. And um, he heard about the Prophet being crazy or... When he came to Mecca, he heard the ignorant people in Mecca saying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is majnoon, naam. naam. So he said, if I found this man, I would, yani, perhaps Allah would heal him through, at my hands. So he met him and then he offered to the Prophet وسلم, to do ruqya on him. Now, and the Prophet responded by reciting khutbah al hajjah to him. And uh, when he heard the Prophet al hajjah he said, you know, no one who's crazy will say these words he has received again. For, that's right. Yani, he realized that these were not the words of a crazy person or a magician or a fortune teller or a poet. So he said, repeat those words that you have just recited. And after he repeated them to him three times, he said to the Prophet wasallam, I have heard the speech of the fortune tellers and I've heard the speech of the magicians and the poets and I've never heard speech like this before, give me your hand so that I may pledge allegiance to you upon Islam. Mm. And he did pledge allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu he entered Islam and the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, what about your people? He said, and my people as well. Now, this is the summary of the story. And this story, yani, and I say story, but of course we mean like true story, right? Not like stories, like people tell stories. But this incident is an indication that if a person knows the Prophet Sallallahu he just knew him from hearing the words that he recited. And if a person really knows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this indeed would be a means for them to enter into Islam. The fourth question, memorize the ayah from the Quran, 68th Surah, fourth ayat, which describes the lofty character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the saying of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala now. Wa innaka. Now, yani that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. said, emphasizing, surely, definitely, certainly, you are upon khuluq azim. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, yani ala deen azim. Yani that is Islam. You are upon a, a magnificent yani deen. That is al Islam. The character of the Prophet وسلم, was Islam. Number five, memorize Aisha radiallahu anha's concise description of the character of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sunnah. And we mentioned a number of hadith. One of them was the hadith of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, um, in which he asked Aisha radiallahu anha about the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said to him in just a few words, Naam. He was gentle and merciful to believers, and his character was the Quran. Okay, his character was the Quran. Kana khuluquhu al Quran. And he was pleased with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered in the Qur'an, and he was displeased with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected. He used to follow the commands of the Qur'an, and he used to abandon whatever had been prohibited. Question number six, discuss the author's explanation of the ayah, رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيًا يُنَادِي لِلْإِيمَانِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ What is the meaning? How has the author, Al-Imam Sa'adi, rahimahullah, explained this ayat? And he said that, this supplication yani from, the, from the, uh, the believers, he said that they said, yani, O oh, our Rabb, we have heard a caller, that is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calling to a man yani, by his speech, by his actions, by his character, by his deen, by his total being. Calling to a man, not just by speech, but by yani, his whole total way of life. Fa'amanna, fa'amanna, naam, meaning that we believed, yani, we accepted it and we believed in it, a belief yani, which doesn't allow any doubt. The seven, last question, what was the basis of the acknowledgement of the prophethood of Muhammad وسلم, by the Roman emperor? Yani, what was the basis of him acknowledging the prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He acknowledged his character and that his character wasn't like the rest any, any, anyone else and uh, his character, his manners, and uh, the message that he was brought with. 
Okay, character, his manners, the message that he brought, but even without knowing the full message of the Prophet ﷺ, when he questioned the people from Quraysh about the Prophet ﷺ, yani he noted what the Prophet ﷺ commanded them with and what he prohibited them from. And this is the basis of an, a person who has sound intellect by simply knowing what he has commanded, yani his sharia is a proof of the rest of his message. Yani his sharia was something that the sound-minded person yani, wouldn't reject. There's nothing in it that he has commanded us with that a person says, yani, this is not good. Or anything that he prohibited us from, that a person would say, this is not good. But yani, the soundness of his sharia, what he commanded and pro- prohibited, was a proof yani, of the yani, correctness of his message, the message that he came with. Uh, okay, tonight, inshallah, as I said, we're going to continue with some of the matters that uh, the author, rahimahullah, also mentions as those things from which iman is derived and those things which strengthen and increase iman. So, we're going to be reading in English from page 53 from the top of the page um, and up to page 55, the top of the page. And in Arabic, we're reading from the lower half of page 52 to 54. So in Arabic, we're reading from the bottom half of page 52, and in English, from page top of 53. So the author, rahimahullah, he says, يعني, وَمِنْ asbab al-Iman وَدَوَاعِهِ يعني, From those things that are the causes or the means to achieving Iman, and the things that call one to Iman, that invite a person to Iman, is a tafakkur fil qawn. Yani reflection, contemplation over what? The universe, reflecting upon the universe, looking at the universe and pondering over it, reflecting upon it. Uh, he said, specifically, في خلق السماوات والأرض وما فيهن من المخلوقات المتنوعة والنظر في نفس الإنسان وما هو عليه من الصفات. Yani reflecting or pondering or contemplating over what exists in the universe, the creation of the heavens and the earth, their creation, and the way they were created, and what they contained of created of various different types of created beings that are in the heavens and in the earth, and likewise looking at examining the human being himself. وَمَا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الصفات, And the characteristics or qualities that are the qualities of the human being. Examining this, contemplating, reflecting upon it. Looking at it yani with yani a thought to consider yani what it all yani involves, the magnitude of it, the greatness of it, the beauty, and so on. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ دَاعٍ قَوِيٌّ لِلْإِيمَانِ For to do so, to reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth and what it contains of various different types of creatures and beings, and looking at the human being himself, and his characteristics and qualities, this is indeed a strong, powerful invitation, caller to Iman. This calls a person to Iman. And then the author mentions three different areas, specific areas that one may examine in the contemplation or reflection of the universe and the creation of the heavens and the earth and the human being, which each of these areas point to specific areas of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani each of these aspects of the creation point to different areas of the yani sifat or different characteristics, qualities, descriptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first of them he said, yani that this, examining the universe, contemplating upon it, is a strong, powerful call to iman, li ma fi hadhi al-mawjudat, Min Adamatil Khalq. Yani the first thing he said to look at, Yani the greatness, the magnificence of the creation of these mawjudat, the things that exist in the universe. Looking at the greatness of their creation, Adali ala kudrati khalikiha wa adamatihi. Yani which point to the greatness, the magnificence of the creation points to the power and the ability of its creator and his magnificence. Yani what we see of magnificence, of greatness in the creation points to the greatness of the creator who created it. Second area he said, وَمَا فِيهَا مِنَ الْحُسْنِ 
والانتظام والاحكام الذي يحير الالباب and likewise looking at the beauty and the excellence and the orderly arrangement of things in the universe and the precision yani the perfection of what Allah has created examining it from this angle yani that which baffled and bewildered yani the people who have intellect those who have minds to think yani the greatness of it the magnificence of it of the beauty of the creation and the orderly arrangement of things and the precision and perfection of what Allah has created adali ala sa'ati ilmillah wa shumul hikmatihi and this yani when a person looks at the orderly arrangement of things and the beauty and the precision and the yani uh, preciseness of what Allah has created in the creation and how these things work together and how they are in harmony this points to the vastness of the knowledge of Allah yani Allah's ilm sa'ati ilmillah wa shumul hikmatihi and the comprehensiveness of his wisdom yani in the way he has placed everything in an orderly fashion with perfection this points to what the vastness of the knowledge of Allah and the comprehensiveness of his wisdom the third area he says wa ma fiha min asnaf al munafi' al manafi' yani wa ni'am al kathira likewise he said what these things in the creation contain of various types of benefits and plentiful yani an abundance of bounties and favors and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani the things that are in the creation that the creatures humans and otherwise benefit from yani as well as the blessings and bounties and favors that Allah has placed in this creation allati la tu'addu wa la tuhsa yani that those bounties and blessings and favors that cannot be counted or enumerated adalati ala sa'ati rahmatillah wujudihi wa birrihi and the, this yani examining the blessings and bounties and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has placed in the creation freely that cannot be counted point to the vastness of the mercy of Allah and his yani generosity and his kindness yani this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful extremely merciful extremely generous and kind to his creation in that he has placed these things in the creation yani without the the creation being entitled to anything just freely from his generosity and his kindness and his mercy ذَلِكَ كُلُّهُ وَذَلِكَ كُلُّهُ يَدْعُو إِلَى تَعْظِيمِ مُبْدِعِهَا وَبَارِئِهَا وَشُكْرِهِ وَاللَّهَجِ بِذِكْرِهِ وَإِخْلَاصِ الدِّينِ لَهُ وَهَذَا هُوَ رُوحُ الْإِيمَانِ وَسِرُّهُ so these things if we examine them in the creation all of them point to or call to yani ta'zim of Allah ta'zim of the one who brought them into existence who fashioned and formed them yani to exalt to glorify yani to revere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who created these things it also calls to gratitude being grateful and thankful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us freely and to be constantly engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make the deen purely for him alone yani if a person examine these things that point to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's yani knowledge his vast knowledge and his wisdom and his mercy uh, and his greatness and glory and magnificence all of this calls a person to exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who created them and to be thankful to him and to remember him yani constantly and most importantly to single out yani to make the deen for purely for Allah alone and this making the deen purely for Allah alone al ikhlas ikhlas ad din lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the ruh of iman wa sir wa sir wa sirruhu yani it is the yani the soul or the spirit yani of the core the essence of iman after this well before that before we go on i'm just going to read from the commentary <coughs> of Sheikh Abdul Razak the son of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abad Al-Badr Hafizuhum Allah may Allah protect and preserve both of them 
The Shaykh, he says, concerning this first point, he says, فَهَذَا مِنْ جُمْلَةِ الْأَسْبَابِ الْمُقُوِّيَةِ لِلْإِيمَانِ Yani that this is from amongst those things that are the causes, causes or the means of strengthening one's iman. Person wants to strengthen their iman, this is from the things that strengthen a person's iman, reflecting upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's great creation and his greatness and his magnificence and the bounties and blessings that he placed in it. That is, reflecting upon the creation of Allah, the great magnificent creation of Allah, and the signs that he has placed in it that we witness, that we see in his creation, including the heaven and earth and night and day and the sun and the moon and the rivers and the oceans and the mountains and the trees, and other than that, from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, which are a sign of the perfection of the one who created them and the magnificence of the one who brought them into being from nothing. And it also points to the fact that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is the ma'abud bihaqqin. Wala ma'abud bihaqqin siwa. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only ma'abud, the only thing that is worshipped, that is worshipped in truth, that has a right to be worshipped, that deserves to be worshipped. There are many aliha things that are worshipped, but they don't have a right to be worshipped. They are not worthy of being worshipped. But this, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, points to the fact that He is the ma'bud, that has a right to be worshipped, that deserves to be worshipped, and that there is nothing which is worshipped that has a right to be worshipped except Him. Then the Shaykh mentions from Surah Ali Imran, 3rd Surah, 190th, 191st Ayat, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. يعني the saying of Allah subhanahu wa taala in third surah 190th and 191st ayah that Allah subhanahu wa taala says the meaning of which is indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth in the creation in examining the creation of the heavens and earth واختلاف الليل والنهار and the alternation of night and day. Indeed, they are signs for people yani, who have understanding. Yani, for those who remember Allah, Allah. Yani, remember Allah in every situation of circumstance, when they're standing, when they're sitting, when they're lying on their sides. And they reflect upon, contemplate, ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they say, Oh, our Rabb, yani, you haven't created this batilan, yani, without a purpose. Yani, you are the one who is free from imperfection, protect us from the punishment of the fire. The Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, he says concerning this, indeed, not only reflecting on the creation of heavens and earth, but reflecting upon the human being himself, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the human being, from those amazing indications of the greatness of Allah's creation and the perfection of his power and ability, for indeed the human being himself and what he has been created upon, his characteristics and qualities that Allah created with the human being is indeed a sign from the signs that point to the perfection of the one who created. Yani the greatness of the one who created him. And for this reason, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he encouraged yani the human being to even examine oneself. In Surah Al-Fussilat, 41st Surah, 53rd Ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ yani We will show them our signs yani in everything that is around in the creation as well as in their selves, signs in the human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned in the uh, 51st Surah, Dhariyat, Adhariyat, 51st Surah, 21st Ayat, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ And likewise, in your own selves, do you not see, yani, do you not look and examine and contemplate and ponder over the signs that are in yourselves. So the human being himself, the human being himself contains great, magnificent ayat and indications, amazing indications of the perfection of his creator and the greatness of the one 
who brought him into existence. <laughs> After this, the Shaykh talks about yani, the condition of the human being, of being in need, in dire need of one's creator. The author, Rahimahullah, says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَنْ نَظَرُوا إِلَى فَقْرِ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ كُلِّهَا وَاضْطِرَارِهَا إِلَى رَبِّهَا مِنْ كُلِّ الْوُجُوهِ وَأَنَّهَا لَا تَسْتَغْنِي عَنْهُ طَرَفَةَ عَيْنٍ خُصُوصًا مَا تُشَاهِدُهُ فِي نَفْسِكَ مِنْ عَدِلَّةِ الْإِفْتِقَارِ وَقُوَّةِ الْإِطْرَارِ Likewise, looking at, examining, considering the need of the created beings, all of them, dire need of their Rabb from every angle, for everything that the human being yani, needs in this, in this world. All of our needs are fulfilled from our Rabb. And that the human being is not free of need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even for one moment, for the blinking of an eye. Not even for one moment. Especially what we witness in our own selves, yani the evidences of our dire need, yani the necessity of turning to our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill our needs. This, examining this condition of the created beings and especially the human being, our need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our yani not being free of need even for a moment. He said, وَذَلِكَ يُوجِبُ لِلْعَبْدِ كَمَالَ الْخُضُوعِ وَكَثْرَةَ الدُّعَاءِ وَالتَّدَرُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي جَلْبِ مَا يَحْتَاجُهُ مِنْ مَنَافِعِ دِينِهِ وَدُنْيَاهِ وَدَفَعِ مَا يَدُرُّهُ فِي دِينِهِ وَدُنْيَاهِ وَيُوجِبُ لَهُ قُوَّةَ التَّوَكُّلْ عَلَى رَبِّهِ وَكَمَالَ الثِّقَ بِوَعْدِهِ وَشِدَّةُ الطَّمَعِ فِي بِرِّهِ وَإِحْسَانِهِ Yani that this examining the dire need of the created being, especially the human being, looking at ourselves and how much we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, necessitates kamal al-khudur, that we humble ourselves, submit ourselves in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfectly, completely, and an abundance of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kathratu dua wa tadarru ila Allah, and Yani begging, pleading, imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to achieve, to receive what we are in need of, of benefits in our religious life and in our worldly life. And to repulse from us that which harms us in our religious life, in our deen, and in our worldly life in the dunya. وَيُجِبُ لَهُ And likewise, it also necessitates, yani this examination of our condition in front of our Rabb necessitates from the human being قُوَّةِ التَّوَقُّلْ عَلَى رَبِّهِ yani that we rely, depend, yani upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally. وَكَمَالَ الثِّقْ بِوَعَدِهِ And that we have perfect confidence in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَشِدَّةُ الطَّمْعَ فِي بِرِّ وَإِسَانِهِ And the, yani, the uh, um, having yani, a strong yani, desire for whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us of goodness. Whatever he has for us. Having a desire for such. وَبِهَذَا يَتَحَقَّقُ الْإِنسَانِ يَتَحَقَّقُ الْإِيمَانِ وَيَقْوَى التَّعَبُّدْ فَإِنَّ الدُّعَى مُخَ الْإِبَادَةِ وَخَالِسُهَا so in doing so, yani from these things, that is, humbling oneself to Allah in submission and obedience, supplicating to Allah yani frequently, and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever we need of benefit in our worldly life and in the dunya, and to repulse from us every harm in our worldly life and in the dunya, and being yani reliant, dependent totally upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and having complete confidence in His promise, and desiring what He has for us of good, it is through this that Iman is realized. It is through this that Iman is realized, actualized, implemented in our life. And that ta'abud, yani the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one's worship is strengthened through this. For indeed, 
the Shaykh says, الدُّعَى مُخَ الْإِبَادَةِ وَخَالِسُهَا Yani that dua, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is indeed the core, the essence, yani the pure, purity of worship. And here, just quickly note that some of the scholars of hadith, yani mention that the narration that mentions مُخ, الدُّعَى مُخَ الْإِبَادَةِ has weakness, but the meaning of it is the same as what came in the Sunan of Abu Dawud and the Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. Al-Hakim said that it's Sahih and Al-Dhahabi and Al-Nawwi and others also said that it's Sahih. And with the wording, Ad-Dua huwa al-Ibadah. Ad-Dua huwa al-Ibadah. Yani dua, it is Ibadah. Yani it's the essence, the core of Ibadah. Uh, Just briefly, the Shaykh, concerning this particular point, he says, any the need of the creatures, and especially the human being, he said, likewise, from another perspective, if the person looks at their dire need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that they, they are not free of him, they have no yani, condition ever of being free of need of their Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, even for the blinking of an eye, he says, concerning this, he mentions the ayah from Surah Al-Fatir, 35th Surah, 15th and 16th ayat, the saying of Allah, Ya yuhan nas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allahi, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hamid. That all people, you all are in need, you are faqir, fuqara, in need of Allah. And Allah is the one who is al-ghani, and who is rich, meaning he is free of need of anything in the creation, and he is hamid, praiseworthy. And he said, Yani that if Allah willed, yani that He will remove you and replace you with a new creation, and that is easy for Allah. The meaning of what He said concerning that. After this, the Shaykh mentions the Hadith Qudsi. Oh, he mentions he refers to the Hadith. He doesn't yani quote the Hadith in its entirety, but he refers to some aspects of the Hadith Qudsi in which it is reported from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the authority of Abi Adhar al Ghifari radiyallahu anhu from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam concerning that which he narrates from his Rabb Tabaraka wa Taala. Yani the saying, Ya ibadi kullukum dalin. Yani that all of you are astray. Illa man hadaytuhu. Except the one that I have guided, so seek guidance from me and I will guide you. Ya ibadi kullukum ja'i'un. All of you are hungry, except the one who I have fed. So seek, yani, to be fed by me and I will feed you. Ya ibadi kullukum arin. All of you are naked. Illa man Except the one that I have clothed. So seek to be clothed by me and I will clothe you. The Shaykh said that this yani, uh, hadith is an indication that the human being is faqir. Yani absolutely poor in need of one's rub. From every angle, whether it is food, clothing, guidance, whatever. We are in need of everything from our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani. He is free of need from every angle, from anything in his creation. He has no need of anything in the creation. فَمَعَرِفَةُ هَذَا الْفَقْرَ فَقْرُ الْعَبْدِ إِلَى رَبِّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَاسْتِشْعَارُ هَذَا الْفَقْرَ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ مُوجِبَاتِ الْإِمَانِ وَدَوَاعِهِ يعني, So knowing this, having knowledge, being aware of this, Yani condition of the human being, being totally in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being conscious of this, calling to mind this reality, not walking around imagining that I have money, that I have power, that I have influence, that I have something, and therefore I'm free of need. But calling to mind, realizing that one is totally, absolutely in need of our Rabb. That this is from those things which necessitate iman and call to iman. And it's from the greatest causes yani of iman. And from the greatest means of strengthening as sila billahi. One's yani connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحُسْنُ وَالتَّوَقُّلْ عَلَيْهِ And yani, making yani, good one's reliance and dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And turning to him, calling on him, asking for one's need, humbling oneself to him totally. <laughs> After this, the author, Rahimahullah, Imam al-Sa'idi, Rahimahullah, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ التَّفَكُّرُ 
في كثرة نعم الله وآلائه العامة والخاصة التي لا يخلو منها مخلوق طرفة عين فإن هذا يدعو إلى الإيمان Likewise, reflecting upon the abundance of the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the general blessings and favors of Allah, and the special ones. Yani, the general bounties and blessings and favors of Allah like that everybody enjoys. Yani, the air that everyone breathes, the sunshine, yani, the rain, everyone is enjoying this. All of the creatures are yani, benefiting from this. And those which are special to every individual, who has sight to see, or hearing to hear, or mind to think. Yani every person who has this, this is a blessing and a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no created being is free of these blessings, of enjoying them even for one moment. We are enjoying them every second of our lives from the time we came into this world until we leave. Indeed, this reflecting upon the, this abundance of bounties and blessings and favors of Allah upon us calls to Iman. This calls to Al-Iman. فَلِهَذَا دَعَى اللَّهَ الرُّسُولُ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِلَىٰ شُكْرِهِ And it is for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the messengers and the believers to gratitude, calls us to be grateful, to be thankful, to be appreciative of Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, 2nd Surah 170, 2nd Ayah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقَنَاكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ All you who believe, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing this ahad, yani to those who have iman. Eat from the tayyibat, the good, lawful, wholesome things which we have provided you with. And be grateful to Allah if indeed you are yani from those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. In kuntum iyahu ta'budun. If it is Allah alone that you worship, then enjoy Allah's blessings and bounties and favors, but be grateful to Allah for that which He has provided. The Shaykh he says here, Fal Iman Yadu ila shukri. Yani, please note this statement here, tremendous statement. And we, this yani, kind of relationship the Shaykh has mentioned previously in other places. فَالْإِمَانْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى الشُّكْرِ وَالشُّكْرُ يَمْنُ بِهِ الْإِمَانِ فَقُلٌ مِنْهُمَا مُلَازِمٌ وَمَلْزُومٌ لِلْآخِرِ Yani, Iman invites or calls to a shukra, being grateful. If a person has iman, this calls a person to gratitude. The person who has iman is going to be grateful. This is from the keys, the absolute keys of success in this world, that a person has gratitude for whatever Allah has blessed them with, and that a person is patient with whatever Allah tries them with. Patience and gratitude. Iman calls a person to be grateful. And the gratitude... يَمْنُ بِهِ iman is the source from which iman is, it grows, it increases and strengthens. Yani if a person has iman, this will call them, it will urge them, it will prompt them to be, to be grateful. And that gratitude, it is through it that iman grows and increases. So the relationship between them, he said, فَكُلٌ مِنْهُمَا مُلَازِمٌ Yani they are, each of them are mulazim, yani inseparable from the other. You can't separate iman from gratitude or gratitude from iman. وَمَلْزُومٌ لِلْآخَرِ And each of them necessitates the other, requires the other. Each of them are inseparable and they each require, any iman requires gratitude. And gratitude, yani necessitates increase of iman. Uh... Here, uh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafidhullah, may Allah protect and preserve him, he says, yani, likewise, from another perspective, reflecting, yani, the human being reflecting upon the blessings of Allah, the innumerable blessings of Allah, and the various types of bounties and favors of Allah, and the gifts of Allah that he gives freely, that cannot be counted or enumerated. 
Yani likewise, this also is a source of Iman, of strengthening Iman, and increasing Iman, and achieving Iman for the one who doesn't have it, reflecting upon the innumerable bounties and favors and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh here, he quotes from Surah Al-Nahl, 16th Surah, 53rd Ayat, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Yani, that you do not have any bounty, blessing or favor except that it is from Allah. Every bounty that we have, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the same surah, Surah Al-Nahl, 16th Surah, 18th Ayat, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا that if you were to attempt to count the bounties and favors and blessings of Allah, you would not be able to count them, to enumerate them. فَهَذِهِ النِّعْمُ وَالْآلَاءَ الْعَامَ وَالْخَاسَةَ وَالَّتِي لَا يَخْلُو مِنْهَا مَخْلُوقٌ آيَةٌ عَلَى الْخَالِقِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمُوجِبَةٌ لِقُوَّةِ الْإِيمَانِ لِقُوَّةِ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَالْلَهَجْ بِذِكْرِهِ وَالشُكْرِهِ the Shaykh says, so these bounties and blessings and favors of Allah, those which are general that everyone enjoys and those which are special, particular to any individual, no human being is free from enjoying these blessings and bounties of Allah. These are all a sign pointing to yani, the greatness and the magnificence of the Creator who created them. And they also necessitate the strengthening of Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that a person be constantly be engaged in the remembrance of Allah and in expressing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh closes and at this point with the ayah from Surah Ibrahim, 14th Surah, 7th ayah. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And remember when Allah proclaimed, your Rabb proclaimed, that indeed if you are grateful, then I will indeed increase you. Yani, in favors and bounties and blessings. And the opposite is also true, that if a person is not grateful, then Allah may remove his blessings and bounties and favors. Indeed, if a person is ungrateful, then the punishment of Allah is severe. We are out of time. Okay, just one last point, and shall we close with this? Which is not brief, no. All right, we can hold it for the next time, inshallah. In any case, the next point is increasing in the dhikr of Allah and dua and supplicating. We'll talk about that, inshallah, in the next time, because you know, even though the point here is relatively brief, but the Shaykh has extensive you know, commentary, so. Um, oh, do we still have a few more minutes? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I'm losing track of the time, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. It's 7.30 to 8.30. Barakallah feekum. Jazakallah khair. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. MashaAllah. So the next point that the Shaykh makes, yani, وَمِنْ asbab dawai al iman. In the footnote, it is mentioned that perhaps the expression should have read, وَمِنْ أَسْبَابَ iman وَدَوَاعِهِ As it came in a previous section of the book. In any case, the meaning is the same. From the causes of iman, the things through which a person, the means through which a person achieves iman, and the things that call to iman, is الْإِكْثَارُ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ كُلَّ وَقْتٍ وَمِنَ الدُّعَاءِ الَّذِي هُوَ مُخْلِ الْإِبَادَةِ yani From the means of achieving iman. And again, any of the benefit of this section of the book is knowing what are those, the main things, the greatest things through which a person can achieve Iman and strengthen one's Iman and increase one's Iman. And this should be the concern of every mu'min, that we are not content that we have entered into Islam and that we have yani, aslul Iman, that we believed in Allah, but rather we want our Iman to be strengthened, to be increased, to grow all the time. Therefore, we have to know what are the asbab, what are the du'a'i? What are the mujibat? What are the things that yani, necessitate strengthening and increasing of iman? So from amongst those things is al-ikthar min dhikri lahi. Kulla waqtin. Min, yani al-ikthar min dhikri lahi. Kulla waqtin. Wa min ad-du'a. 
and also al ikthar min al dua alladhi huwa mukhl ibadah yani that a person frequently abundantly engage in the remembrance of Allah all the time and also al dua which is the heart the core of worship two things the author mentions here together yani increasing and frequently being engaged in the remembrance of Allah and also in supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time this is something that we have to look at ourselves we don't have to look at anybody else and just ask ourselves how frequently do i engage in the remembrance of Allah yani is my tongue moist yani constantly engaged in the remembrance of Allah or is my tongue engaged with whatever whatever it might be for every individual yani am i constantly engaged in calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for my every need and he is the only one who has the ability to guarantee it or am i engaged in something else so yani and it's a reminder to us and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has yani it, it it has been he has given to us so many words of remembrance of allah that have been authentically reported from him so many yani beautiful ad'iyah that have been authentically reported from him that a muslim has yani it, we are without need to go anywhere else with yani to find that which we should be engaged in daily every day morning noon and night throughout our life yani the remembrance of allah and calling upon him the author he says fa inna dhikr lillahi yaghrisu shajarat al iman fi al qalb wa yughadhiha wa yunammiha yani that the remembrance of allah implants the tree of iman in the heart of the believer the remembrance of allah makes firm the tree of iman in the heart of the believer that we started out this book with the mention of the tree of iman and it also nourishes that tree and it causes it to grow and it causes it to grow a dhikr and then he mentions yani a statement that is also yani very very important yani to reflect upon perhaps to memorize and to act upon most importantly wa kullama izdada al-'abdu dhikran lillahi qawiya imanuhu kullama izdada al-'abdu dhikran lillahi qawiya imanuhu to whatever extent the person increases the remembrance of allah to that extent the iman will be strengthened yani the more a person engage in the remembrance of allah the more the iman will be strengthened and whoever wants strong iman then one of the primary fundamental principal ways of strengthening iman increasing iman it is to be constantly engaged in the dhikr of allah and of course by dhikr of allah we don't just mean yani pronouncing the words on the tongue but it requires yani that it its root comes from the heart and that a person understands what they are saying they comprehend the meaning of those words and that they believe in them in their heart whoever increases in the remembrance of allah then to that extent the iman will be increased then he says yani on the other side kama anna al imana yad'u ila kathrat al dhikr and likewise in the same way iman calls to an abundance of dhikr yani the more a person engages in the dhikr of allah the more the iman will be strengthened and likewise that iman that they have will be calling to an increase yani frequent remembrance of allah so there is a reciprocal re- relationship increasing in the dhikr of allah increases one iman one's iman and iman yani demands requires calls invites one to increase in the remembrance of allah so the more the person increases in the remembrance of allah the more the iman is strengthened and the more the iman is strengthened the more it calls them to engage in the remembrance of allah then the shaykh closes this point by saying faman ahabba allah akthara min dhikrihi whoever loves allah that person will increase yani will be frequent plentiful in remembering him if a person loves allah they will remember allah a lot so that's a gauge for every person to look at their own self how much do i remember allah this is an indication of the love of allah whoever loves allah then that person 
will remember Allah more and more. وَمَحَبَّتُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْإِيمَانِ بَلْ هِيَ رُوحُهُ And the love of Allah, it is Iman. Rather, it is the ruh, the heart, the soul, the spirit of Iman. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we close yani, with the comments of the Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafidhullah, may Allah protect and preserve him. He says concerning these two affairs, yani, the increase in the remembrance of Allah and the dua, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the causes and the things that call to Iman is the increase in the remembrance of Allah all the time and also supplicating Allah, which is the core of worship. These two matters, as the author Rahimullah has mentioned, are from the great asbab, the great causes of strengthening Iman. And for this reason, it came in the Quran, the command to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plentifully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, 33rd Surah, 41 and 41st and 42nd Ayat, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أُذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا يعني, O oh, you who believe, remember Allah يعني, كَثِيرًا much and glorify Him, meaning declare His perfection in the morning and in the evening. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, same Surah, 33rd Surah, 35th Ayat, the end of the Ayat, الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما. يعني Allah mentions here in this series, in this uh, Ayat, a number of characteristics and qualities that the Muslim يعني, should try to characterize himself with. And he ends it by saying, those who remember Allah kathira, much, the males and the females who remember Allah much, and Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a tremendous, magnificent reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with the remembrance, with to be frequent in remembering Him. Because the remembrance of Allah is the nourishment of the souls. It's the nourishment of the inner beings, of the human being. And it's from those things that necessitate quwwatul iman. Yani strong iman. The iman of the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially, the shaykh says, وَلَا سِيَمَا إِذَا جَمَعَ فِي ذِكْرِهِ بَيْنَ الذِّكْرِ بِالْقَلْبُ وَالْلِسَانِ Especially if the person combines in the remembrance of Allah, between the remembrance of Allah by the heart and the remembrance by the tongue, both of them together. Indeed, this is the highest level of dhikr, of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also that a person remember Allah, yani that is, yani the highest level is that a person remembers Allah yani with both their heart and their tongue. Not like the person who is walking around engaged in Orally, yani verbally mentioning the names of Allah with dhikr beads or other than that, and their heart and their mind is somewhere else. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ra'ad, 13th Surah, 28th Ayat, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ yani, And those who believe their hearts are content at rest in the remembrance of Allah. Is it not the remembrance of Allah through which hearts find contentment, satisfaction, rest, tranquility? And it is in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the hearts find rest, contentment, peace, and tranquility. Then the Shaykh, he says, as far as the second of these two affairs, that is a dua, then it, it, its affair is a great, magnificent, affair in strengthening Iman, especially if a person is conscious, aware that the affairs, all of them, including having Iman in Allah and having a good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rectification of one's heart and the uprightness upon obedience to Allah, especially if a person is conscious and aware that all affairs especially Iman in Allah and one's relationship with Allah, that this is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
especially if a person is aware of that, that everything of importance and greatness, yani, it's in the hands of Allah. Yani, a person will not be upright. A person's heart will not be pure and whole. A person will not have a strong and good relationship with Allah, yani, except by the permission of Allah. So if a person knows that, then this is where dua comes in. Everything is in the hands of Allah. A person will not achieve anything of good except that is from Allah. Yani that it is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, one of the salaf, that is Mutarruf, Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Shakhir, a Shakhir with Kasra, Naam. He was one of the scholars of the Tabi'een. Al Dhahabi said, Al Imam Al Hujja Al Qudwa. Yani Al Imam Al Dhahabi, Rahimullah, described him as Al Imam. And this is not like yani, the general use of Imam that we use it today. Yani a leader in the deen, a Hujja Al Qudwa. Yani he is a proof in this deen. And he is also an example, a model to be followed. Mutarrif, rahimahullah, from the scholars of the Tabi'een. He said, I reflected, I contemplated upon al-khayr, good, and realized huwa abwaabun kathira. That there are many doorways to good. As-salat is khayr, as-siyam is khayr. So it became clear that all of this Whatever it is of good that you think about, it's in the hands of Allah. Yani meaning that a person, it is not possible for you to pray, except that Allah enables you to do so. It is not possible for you to fast, except that Allah enables you to do so. It is not possible for a person to fulfill anything of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, illa idha anaka alayha, except that Allah helps you to do it. So it became clear أن الدعاء مفتاح كل خير يعني الدعاء مفتاح كل خير The dua is the key to every good And this statement here in these words is narrated from Shaykh Al-Salaam Taymiyyah and Majmu Al-Fatawa as well And in some of the narrations يعني, uh, In some of the narrations the wording that came from Mutarrif is that jima'u al-khayri al-du'a. Yani that that which combines, that includes every type of good, it is al-du'a. Jima'u al-khayri al-du'a. Here the shaykh mentions the wording as what? Al-du'a miftahu kulli khayr. Basically the same meaning. Du'a is the key of every good, or that which combines every good is al-du'a. And that is because every type of khair is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the key to every good, it is calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, 2nd Surah, 186 ayat, إِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Yani that if, yani the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if, my worshippers call upon me, ask about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Then I say, indeed I am near. I am near to the one who calls upon me. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْوِ إِذَا دَعَانِ And I answer, I respond to the one who calls, if and when he calls. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making a promise that he is near and that if you call upon him, he responds. It is for this reason that it is incumbent upon the human being and yukfir min su'alillah min khayr dunya wal akhirah that we yani, abundantly, frequently, continuously, constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good of this world and the good of the next life. La siyama al-iman alladhi huwa a'adhamu al-matalib wa ajal al-mawahid especially asking Allah for iman and strengthening Iman, and increase of Iman, and protecting our Iman. That Iman which is the greatest of things that is sought, and is the most noble of the things that are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh closes by mentioning some of the supplications of our Prophet wasallam concerning this matter, yani, of Iman, and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, the most important of things, that is, yani, our deen, and our Iman, and Tawheed. He mentions the saying, the supplication of the Prophet Sallallahu that's reported in the Sahih of Muslim from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Allahumma aslih li 
الدين الذي هو اسمة عمري Oh Allah, rectify for me my deen, which is the controlling factor of protection or preservation of everything. Wa aslih li dunya yallati fiha maashi, and up and rectify for me my dunya, my worldly affairs, yani which contain my life and my livelihood in this world. Wa aslih li akhirat yallati fiha maadi. And, and rectify for me my akhirah, yani my, the matters related to the next life, yani which are those matters which determine my destination after the return or the resurrection. وَجَعَلِ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لِي فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ وَجَعَلِ الْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لِي مِنْ خُلِّ شَرٍ And make life, yani everything in my life in this world, make it, yani an increase for me in good, and make death for me a means of rest from everything of evil. This is a comprehensive um, supplication. We heard it in the khutbah today too. Now, reported by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu in the Sahih of Muslim, collected by Imam Muslim. Uh, the Shaykh, he said, and likewise, uh, and here he mentions, and this is near the end of what we want to say, he said that the Prophet sallallahu gave precedence to his asking Allah for the rectification of deen before the rectification of the dunya, and that is because the rectification of the deen is the greatest of things that are requested and the most noble of that which is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also from the supplications of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, Allahumma zayyinna bi zinat al-iman, wa ja'alna hudat al-muhtadeen. And this is also a lengthy supplication reported by al-Nasai, Shaykh al-Bani said that it's sahih, a lengthy supplication. In the end of it, he said, Allahumma zayyinna bi zinat al-iman. O oh Allah, beautify us, adorn us with the adornments of iman. With the adornments of iman. Not the adornments of beautiful clothing or jewelry or whatever people adorn themselves with, but adorn us with the adornments, the beautification of iman. Make us beautiful by our iman. Waj'alna hudat al And make us of those who are, yani who, who are guides, who guide others, and we are those who are rightly guided. And finally he said, the Prophet ﷺ very, very frequently used to say, Ya muqallib al-kulub, or Allahumma muqallib al-kulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O the one who turns the hearts over or upside down, up and down, make my heart firm upon your deen. And this hadith is also reported in the Sunan of at tirmidhi Ibn Majah and Shaykh al-Bani said that it's sahih. Tremendous du'a that a person is in need of reciting, yani daily, frequently, regularly. O oh Allah, the one who turns the hearts, make my heart to be firm upon your deen. And the shaykh closes by saying that a du'a and turning to Allah and asking Allah sincerely, yani requesting from Allah whatever that we need, there's no doubt that this is from the greatest things which necessitate iman. And from the greatest things that make a person firm upon Iman. And this is the end of what we wanted to say. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadun la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubi lake. And I see we went over a few minutes. May Allah forgive us for that. If there's any question or comment, inshallah, we'll take it. Yani? After we, after we close out, inshallah. In case anybody has to leave, you're free to leave. Barakallah fikum wa jazakum Allahu khair. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيراً